Hey, it's your Uncle Herman here, and I'm still an alpha male. If you, like me, are chronically online, you will have seen so-called body language experts popping up all over YouTube and TikTok, telling us what people's body language is saying about them. These people often claim to have taken some course in body language or have trained in psychology. What they don't tell you is that body language as a study is not recognized as a scientific endeavor. In fact, most body language analysts are self-taught, and it's largely considered to be a pseudoscience in scientific communities. If you are new to this channel, my name is Uncle Herman and this is my voice. I make videos analyzing internet trends and controversies like this one. And if you want to go the extra mile to support the channel, I have a Ko-Fi page or coffee page where you can buy me a coffee if you want to. Now, TikTok body language experts appear in two groups. The first group claims that they know what body language tricks you can use to make yourself more attractive or more confident. Or in this instance, they can teach you that putting your hands in your pockets will make you stop standing like a nerd. Stop standing like a nerd? Try this body language hack to look more attractive. Most guys, when they're standing, they look awkward. They don't know what to do with their hands, feet squared. And overall, this just looks weak and submissive. So instead, what you want to do is offset your feet, then lean back slightly lightly on your back foot and keep one hand in your pocket. Having this body language is going to make you look less anxious, calm, relaxed, and dominant. The other group are people who analyze video footage of celebrities and tell us what they can read from their body language. These people often have words like psychology in their bio so you know that they're legitimately trained. This person, for example, says that they analyze body language for a living. In reality, that means that they make a living on TikTok making videos like these. This was absolutely yeah. incredible. We we get to literally take over Australia. It's mm -hmm. like this movie is the like the tourism board of Australia just gave us carte blanche on anything we wanted. Yes, technically they analyze body language for a living, but that doesn't mean that any of their analysis is accurate or scientifically backed. Anyone can jump on TikTok and claim to be a body language expert, making unfounded claims about what celebrities are thinking. And because they already feed into popular opinion, it's easy for them to go viral without anyone questioning their methods. For example, this video claims that Andrew Garfield is feeling flirty because of his body language. Come on. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you? You might. We must stop meeting like this. I only ever want to see you. What? At a, on like a, on a, on a, that's not the what? end of the sentence. That's not the end of the sentence. You I only ever want to see you in these kinds of situations. What about other kinds of situations? Not okay. interested. Not interested. <laughs> However, the interview already went viral because Andrew Garfield was outwardly being flirty and jokey and everybody loved it. This so-called body language analysis is nothing new, it's just leaning into what everybody was already thinking. This video from the same creator claims that Lily Reinhardt's body language, as she's posing for a photo, suggests that she has something against Sydney Sweeney. I'm not sure that people's body language is going to be at all natural on a red carpet in front of lots of cameras. Just because she's got a resting face doesn't mean that she's channeling some deep internal anger. She might literally just be touching her hair to fix it so that she can pose for a photo. But even if this is an accurate reading of what celebrities are thinking, that would be pure coincidence, as reading body language has been debunked time and time again by scientists as an inaccurate pseudoscience. Though actual scientific communities have dismissed body language reading as a way of understanding communication, it's still very popular in the mainstream because it sells super well to the masses. People want to believe that they can read another person's nonverbal cues to tell what they're really thinking or if they're lying, and they want to believe believe that standing with their hand in their pocket is going to make them appear more alpha. But the truth is that there is no shortcut to knowing if someone is lying or understanding their internal thoughts, as there are no universal movements or so-called micro-expressions that everybody uses to mean the same thing. And coincidentally, the more famous you are, the more meaning your tiny movements have. For example, this video claims that Prince Harry putting his hand in his coat is likely just an unconscious habit, but a body language expert has weighed in, which means it could mean something more. It's likely a habit, but it could be a way of saying he's not quite comfortable in the situation, and suggested the hand placement had roots in protecting himself. She added, the move is deeply unconscious, and it's unlikely he'd admit to exactly why he's doing it. Another TikTok claims that Meghan Markle having her hand on Prince Harry's back must mean that she treats him like a son and not like a spouse, as if it's not completely normal to put your hand on your partner's back. Literally anything that a famous couple does, particularly Meghan Markle and Prince Harry, will be thrown around online by body language experts claiming that they can read into their relationship in ways that nobody else can. And the reason that this goes viral is simply because people want to believe that there is some tension in Harry and Meghan's relationship. People are obsessed with trying to work out what goes on behind closed doors. They either want to hate Prince Harry, hate Meghan Markle, 
people or hate both of them. And these videos help fuel people's own biases and want. A TikTok tells someone that Prince Harry's secret hand signal means that he's uncomfortable, whilst also telling the viewer that it's likely just an unconscious habit. But the viewer will latch onto the idea that he is uncomfortable and deduce that this is what it means without having any factual evidence actually presented to them. A lot of online body language experts cite their training in the field as a way to assure their audience that they are legitimate. But are there actually any certifications in body language reading that are based on real science? The short answer is no. Mooncat made an amazing video debunking the science behind body language reading that I will link below. To summarize, body language analysis has no real evidence-based logic to it. Instead, it is one individual speculation. Studies have shown that human beings are not very good at detecting when somebody is lying using their non-verbal cues. Just because you have lots of practice in analyzing body language does not mean that your guesses are accurate, because each individual is different and all body language analysis really is, is guessing. Sure, you can claim that it's an educated guess, but it's still pure speculation as there are no universal ways of telling when a person is lying, for example. This paper in the Annual Review of Psychology writes that the most popular lie detection tools used in legal contexts have in common that they claim that non-verbal behavior can offer guidance in the search for truth. In many ways, these practice-based techniques are similar in that they share the naive psychological view that a deceitful person is one under emotional pressure, linking cues to their internal distress through channels that they are not aware of. Practitioners are offered a variety of lie detection techniques that amount to little more than pseudoscience. It's a lamentable state of affairs that professionals are taught all sorts of techniques with no evidence that they actually work. Unfortunately, it's not illegal to bring bogus training packages onto the market. Professionals should ask for conclusive evidence that the proposed techniques actually work before signing up to any course in lie detection. The paper goes on to talk about the confirmation biases that are often present in these so-called body language experts. They write that people tend to seek information that confirms rather than disconfirms their beliefs. Any support that they find for their beliefs will boost their confidence that their views are correct, making it less likely that they will alter them. Of course, people will always find supporting evidence. For example, sometimes liars do look away or make excessive movements. Moreover, when people come across an example that disconfirms their beliefs, they are more likely to disregard it than to interpret this new evidence as a sign that their initial belief is incorrect, a phenomenon called belief perseverance. Once people have formed an opinion that makes sense to them, they will come up with further reasons to support their view. If people are asked why they think liars look away, they might think of reasons to corroborate this view and search their memory for examples where they encountered liars who averted their gaze. Thinking about examples that support their beliefs will strengthen their opinion. Now this might just be one paper, but there are hundreds of others that come to the same conclusion. In fact, nearly every peer-reviewed study on the topic makes the same point that body language analysis is frequently disproven and unreliable. The so-called experts in the field often get their qualifications from an online course run by some ex-FBI interrogator who claims that their hundreds of hours of experience make them understand a universal language that nobody even knows they're speaking. Sounds cool if it were true, but time and time again has been proven to be based purely on the observer's own opinion and biases, rather than any observable facts of nonverbal communication. A lot of the time, these so-called experts will analyze videos of criminals in interrogations where we already know the outcome of the trial. We already know that this person is guilty, so they're just using confirmation biases to try and convince us that they would have been able to tell these people were criminals before anybody else because of their genius insight into nonverbal cues. Now, body language experts thrived during the Amber Heard versus Johnny Depp trial, and they continue to thrive, posting new revelations about Amber Heard's body language every day. For example, this person claims that Amber Heard blinking excessively must mean that she is lying. Remember, if I um, threw anything in his direction, I, I... A simple way to tell if somebody is lying is when they start to blink excessively after or during a statement. Or this other clickbait video claims that she's snorting something in her tissue, and comments pile on saying that she must be snorting something to make her cry because she couldn't possibly just be blowing her nose or giving an emotional testimony because, you know, when people cry, they often need to blow their nose. There's even an entire TikTok account dedicated to the trial that mainly reposts so-called body language experts analyzing Amber Heard's body language. Language. The description of the account says this is not a safe space for misogyny as one woman's lie does not mean women lie. However, just because you write that it's not misogyny in your description doesn't mean that's not true. Even if you don't intend it to be, there is inherent misogyny in using a pseudoscience to try and prove that a woman is lying about abuse. The second the Amber Heard trial started, a suspicious amount of people magically became body language experts and used their newfound expertise to go viral on TikTok. Saying that they are backed up by science essentially gives these people a new excuse to 
to bully women and accuse them of lying. And people love to do this with people like Amber Heard who the internet already want to hate because they know that that's how they'll go viral. One YouTuber who was analysing the trial spoke to Wired about his regrets using strong language to describe Amber Heard when he accused her of being the abuser. Logan Portenier, who runs the YouTube channel Observe, made a video a few years ago analysing Amber Heard's 2016 trial. The video got over 4 million views and he made some various claims about Amber Heard's body language. Generically speaking, mouth shrug indicates insecurity or uncertainty about what is being said. I think that is the case here. I'm not certain that that is the case here, but I think that is the case here. If she's actually the victim, why is she not more passionate about it? This is not a good indicator for Amber being the victim. It's a very good indicator for her being an abuser. I would advise to really push on points of these responses because they're not genuine. There's something fishy going on here and it needs to be pushed. It needs to be tested to find out if it's actually genuine or not. Parts of her recollecting some abuse from Johnny and it's it's terribly delivered. There's way too much thinking. There's incongruencies in the delivery, the story, everything to where it's been pretty well shown that it's not true. However, when speaking to Wired, Logan admitted that his knowledge of body language was largely self-taught, though he took some psychology classes at university. But he claims that he's been studying the topic for a decade, consuming the work of former FBI agent Joe Navarro, which means that he must be accurate. It is worth noting that at the start of his videos, he will often say disclaimers that his study is not entirely accurate, but that doesn't stop all of his viewers taking his opinions as facts. It is at best 70% accurate. There is definitely a talent to reading it. It is not a complete science as something like psychology is. It is not quite a pseudoscience. It is a mixture in between. So if you watch this, this is an absolute truth. This is an educated conclusion based off of given facts. In the article, they interviewed Logan, and he said that he stands by the statements made in the video, but says that he probably spoke a little too strongly and would be a little bit more mellow if he was to make such a video now. And with the rise in TikTok and short form content, creators don't even have time to put disclaimers on their videos. Instead, we're just seeing content being pushed out with no context and no research. All you need to do to get a viral TikTok body language video is find a celebrity that people already don't like, or a criminal that everyone already knows is a criminal, and state that some part of their non-verbal communication proves what everyone is already saying about them. Nobody will check your qualifications or question what makes you an expert in reading body language. Instead, they'll just agree with you because of their own confirmation biases and you have a recipe for repeated viral videos on TikTok. There's nothing that Amber Heard can do that will not result in these videos. Every one of her movements is being dissected for the public by pseudoscientific self-taught experts. I also want to talk about ableism in these videos. The people claiming that they know what body language means, that somebody is into you or that someone is lying, are not really taking into account people's individual context, circumstances, mannerisms, or disabilities. A lot of people, particularly those with mental health issues or disabilities, present in unexpected ways. For example, an autistic person who finds eye contact difficult and overwhelming could be labeled as a liar by these so-called experts for avoiding eye contact, when in reality it has nothing to do with whether what they're saying is true or not. There are also stimming movements that people will do to regulate themselves, and each person will have their own unique way of stimming in different environments. All of these so-called tells, such as blinking too much, touching your nose, or mouth covering, can just be ways that people are dealing with their everyday environment. This makes disabled people, and anybody who behaves in a way that people would consider to be abnormal, more susceptible to being profiled as having suspicious body language, or nonverbal cues that mean something when they don't. Not to mention that the whole idea of reading nonverbal cues is something that excludes people who are unable to pick up on them. Any clues that people claim they can read to indicate what someone is feeling is largely socialized by the culture that they grew up in, and every culture will have their own ways of expressing themselves, and those ways only account for neurotypical and able-bodied people. People outside of the norm have different ways of expressing themselves, and no TikTok is going to teach you how to know what each individual's movements mean. And at the end of the day, someone blinking or looking around or touching their nose doesn't actually necessarily mean anything. Sometimes people are just existing in an environment. For example, this so-called analysis of Philip Schofield. With all the controversy surrounding Philip Schofield, he actually gave a BBC interview. Let's analyse his body language to see if he's telling the truth. During the interview, Philip Schofield very rarely makes eye contact. He's always looking off camera like he is here. Whenever he's asked a direct question, he always looks to the side. Eye contact is a brilliant trust-building exercise, and the fact that he's not doing it makes it seem like he's got something to hide. 
He also folds his lips quite a lot here. This is an example of when you're trying to hide what you're trying to say. You're nervous, you're anxious. You fold your lips in on themselves like you're telling a lie. Throughout the interview, he really adopts this defensive pose, crossing the arms and crossing the legs. Here, it's almost as if he's saying, right, I need to protect myself, which could be natural if he's on a really high pressure interview like he was here. The only reason that this person is saying that Philip Schofield's body language means that he's got something to hide is because that we all know now in hindsight that he was hiding an affair. I guarantee this so-called body language analyst would not have told us that if he had seen this interview before the news came out. There are no universal body language signs that someone's attracted to you or that someone is confident or lying. All of these things look different on different people and humans are notoriously bad at picking it up. As this article in Psychology Today cites, researchers looked at this myth and found that most of us are no better than chance at detecting deception, and very few of us rise above chance. What are often mistaken for signs of deception, i.e. nose touching, mouth covering, eye closing, high pitched voice, are really just pacifiers that help us to relieve stress. These pacifying behaviours are employed both by the guilty and innocent to relieve the stress of an interview. This person on TikTok responds to a comment saying that body language is a pseudoscience, saying that they can see who a person is before they've even said a word due to their body language, and therefore body language analysis must be correct. Your therapist is analyzing your body language. I'm sorry, but that's the truth. And the reason why we all do this is because it gives us so much information about who you are, often more than even your words can say. Before people even walked into my office, I knew so much about them from where they were sitting in the waiting room, how they were sitting, what they were doing while they were waiting, to where they choose to sit in my office. All of this is information and it's actually really research backed. People like John and Julie Gottman, who are the legendary couples therapists, would actually wire people up to different machines while they had them stay in an apartment for three days. And they would look for information based on the things that they would say, heart rate, uh, the way that they were breathing, all this different information would give them an indicator of what was going on under the surface. And all of that information, the thousands of hours of work that they put into collecting this information helps us as therapists understand how to best help you. What they don't say is whether or not their assumptions were correct. And regardless, isn't this just profiling? Aren't you just assuming who someone is by looking at them without understanding their context? You don't know what someone is walking into a room with. You don't know what they've just experienced that might alter their mood. This idea of our non verbal language giving us away is completely flawed and does not at all take into account the full scope of human experience. Sure you might guess right once in a while, but if you really want to know what someone is feeling or thinking, you're going to have to wait for them to feel comfortable enough to tell you, and that's likely not going to happen whilst you're staring at them trying to interrogate their body language. So next time you see a TikTok trying to tell you what someone's body language means, don't take it at face value. These people are saying exactly what you want to hear in order to trick you into thinking that they are some sort of expert in a science that has been proven inaccurate and plain made up time and time again.